Welcome to our online worship resource for Augustana Lutheran Church for the third Sunday of Easter, Sunday, April 18, 2021. Again, welcome as we gather to worship in the name of the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ. As has been our practice, if you're able, we've lit a candle here to remind us that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, also that we then take that light of the world into the world that stands in need of the good news. A few announcements. Uh, in a couple Sundays, May 2nd, we will begin our parking lot worship here at Augustana, weather permitting. So uh, we'll be communicating through the normal chan channels if the weather prevents us from starting. Congratulations to Melissa and Coltrane Carlson of our congregation on the birth of a son, Miles David Lee, who was born on April 1st. And in our prayers today, we remember those who are hospitalized. Dick Martin is at Mary Greeley. Corey Barrent is at Mercy. Jeanette Westberg is at Iowa Methodist. And Connie Sprecher was at Mary Greeley. We begin with our Easter acclamation. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. 
Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our power or piety, we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murder given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Our psalm today is from Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor or my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. Our second reading is from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, and no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, 
they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and the repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. O oh Christ. Mrs. Thompson's fourth grade class one afternoon was engaged in an exercise. Mrs. Thompson said to each of her students to think who they thought the greatest person alive today was. And they had some time to, to think about that and think about their responses. And then one at a time, she asked the kids, to share their answer. Who is the greatest person alive today? One of the first children said, well, LeBron James. He's the greatest basketball player of all time, so he's the greatest person alive today. And then someone said, the Pope, for he spends his life serving other people and he really doesn't get paid much at all. Then someone said, President Biden. He's the president of the United States, and the United States is the greatest nation in the world. One person said the greatest person alive was her mom, because her mom took care of her and her sisters. And then it finally came time for little Donnie, and little Donnie said, I think it is Jesus Christ. He loves everybody, and he's always ready to help whoever needs help. Mrs. Thompson said, well, you know what, that's a great answer, Donnie, and I'm a Christian and I really admire Jesus too, but you see, there's one thing I asked you, who is the greatest person alive today? And Jesus lived thousands of years ago and he died on a cross. So do you have another answer? And little Donnie, his uh, face full of innocent joy said, oh, Mrs. Thompson, uh-uh, that's not true. For Jesus is alive, and he lives in me. We gather this continuing celebration of the Easter season. It's not a Sunday. It's a Sunday of Sunday, a season of Sundays, seven Sundays that we celebrate around that good news that Jesus is alive. And little Donnie had it right that the crucified and risen Jesus Christ is alive in each and every one of us, at work in each and every one of us. Well, this third Sunday of Easter, we hear uh, in the Gospel of Luke, uh, we have this great picture of Jesus, who, I don't know how else to say this, all of a sudden, Jesus is standing there. And then just in that fact, there is such a, a, that the heart of what Luke is trying to say. Now, the setting is the 11 are gathered. Uh, they're kind of hanging out. They're thinking, and Jesus suddenly appears. He bids them peace, and he offers his hands and his feet. He talks to them about the meaning of Scripture, what Scripture has said about him, and how his crucifixion and resurrection are so key and then he says something really kind of strange. He says, you got anything to eat? He sort of sounds like a teenager, doesn't he? He says, do you have anything to eat here? For in the midst of this, the disciples are still thinking that maybe he's a ghost, he's a spirit. And they give Jesus a piece of fish and he eats it in their presence. And then he says, having said all of this, you are witnesses of these things. You are witnesses of these things. The first thing that the followers of Jesus are witnesses of is that Jesus Christ is present. 
Do you hear again and again and again in many ways how Luke is trying to impress upon us the physicality of the risen Lord's presence? But with his hands and feet showing that the risen Lord is also the crucified Lord. He is risen indeed, but he still bears the, the uh, marks of the nails in his hands and feet. And if you listen to that gospel again, you can see how Luke has the disciples using all of their senses. They see Jesus. They touch Jesus. They actually watch Jesus eat. So in a way, they're experiencing taste. That Jesus Christ, the crucified, risen Lord, is truly present. The physicality of that is what they and we are witnesses of. Nancy Iceland is a chaplain, and she says that she has always been waiting for a, uh, a mighty revelation from God. And in one particular time in her ministry, she felt that she had kind of drifted from God, that her relationship with the Lord had kind of gone lukewarm and was rekindled in this particular way. She had been assigned duty at a rehab hospital in the Atlanta, Georgia area. This hospital a specialized working with patients who were recovering from serious spinal cord injuries. And she had been there a few days when she was assigned to do a Bible study with patients. And she did the Bible study and towards the end of that Bible study, she made a confession. She confessed that she didn't really know if God understood her, if God really cared for her. And she kind of left it hanging out there as a question, a questioning God's understanding us. And after a long pause, a young African-American man said, well, if God was in a sip puff, maybe we would know he understands. A sip puff is a powered wheelchair that has kind of a straw-like uh, contraption control that someone who is a quadriplegic uses their mouth to puff or sip on to control their wheelchair. Think about that. If God were in a sip puff, we would know he understands. Well, the crucified risen Lord shows physically that he knows. You know, he's here in the midst of suffering and still bears the marks of death. Especially during this time of pandemic, when we are full of limitations, when we are experiencing multiple uh, layers of loss and grief, it is the crucified and risen Jesus Christ who gets us, who comes for us, who is in our midst. And it is exactly in our midst that he brings to us new life. But that's not where it stops. For then these witnesses are sent. And in fact, if you read in the Holy Scripture, the resurrection stories, the appearances of Jesus, they all end up being sort of a commissioning. The disciples are sent in response to encountering the crucified and risen Jesus. Here in Luke, they are sent forth to take the good news of Easter to the whole world, beginning from Jerusalem. It goes out to all the world. Now, it's not just Lutherans, but Lutherans, when we bring up the word witnessing, we get kind of squeamish and kind of nervous. We laugh a little bit about being shy Lutherans, and we think maybe we don't have much to contribute, but each of us has a role. Several years ago, a major corporation was shifting their corporate headquarters from the East Coast to the West Coast of the United States. In the press conference where the CEO was, you know, announcing this major relocation, he was asked if the company anticipated their employees making the move from the East Coast to the West Coast. 
And the CEO said, well, you know, we've talked to our employees and all of our key employees have agreed to move. Now, he said, we think that some of our support staff, like secretaries and the like, will not make the move. He didn't think he was saying anything drastic. But all those people who were support staff in the company, what did they hear? They heard that they were unimportant. So the next business day, when the company reopened for business, all of the support staff showed up for their jobs, but they refused to answer the telephone. It was a mess. We're kind of like that corporation. No one is unimportant. All of us are called to be witnesses and have our role in this work. We are to be witnesses to the world. Luigi Terizio was an Italian violin collector back in the middle 1800s. In fact, he was famous for collecting violins, really, really good violins. And he stored them. He didn't play them. He just collected them and kept them in storage. So that when Terizio died, his family found that he had in his possession more than 200 of the very finest violins in the world. Uh, Guanari, he had more than 20 Stradivarius violins, names that maybe you even realize. More than 200 of the finest violins in the world had simply been setting in cabinets in his home. And upon his death, his family sold all of these violins that had been silent for decades, and they could finally share the music that they were capable of. Isn't that interesting? Terizio, Luigi Terizio, was so devoted to the violin, the instrument, that he ended up robbing the world of the music of these very finest violins. Don't be like Luigi. Christ is alive. The crucified, risen Lord Jesus Christ is with us here in the midst of daily life. And we are all sent forth to be witnesses, to share the good news of Easter. Don't be like Luigi. Amen.
We confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join together now in our prayers of intercession. Each petition will close with the words, Hear us, O God, and you are invited to respond with the words, Your mercy is great. Let us pray. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God. You hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. Today we pray especially for Dick, Connie, Corey, and Jeanette. And be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace you have promised 
so that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia! Thanks be to God. Alleluia!